At this point in time, I'm not sure if I have hope for the future. The Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change says that we need to cut greenhouse gas emissions by a huge amount to avoid the worst effects of climate change. But I'm not sure if that will happen. How will this affect my future? Do I see a bright future ahead of me? Do I see my loved ones there with me? Or do I see climate disasters displacing more people and creating thousands of climate refugees? Do the leaders care about my future? Do the people in power care about the next generation's future? Is the world ever going to take climate change seriously? I think climate change will affect my future in many different ways. I think one of the major ways that will affect me is people who, who my loved ones, people who I care about. That's my friends, that's my future coming of family, people around me, communities, and a lot of natural resources will be gone. Climate change does cause a lot of refugees to come to Canada around the world because of the natural disruption that happens around the world. Um, there's a lot of people who leave their countries just because that impacts them and they feel this is something that's going to affect my family, so I'm going to leave from here. And I think my parents, the reason why they left India in the beginning was they felt that it was not a safe spot to be there yet. So my parents felt that me and my brother needed a secure and a bright future. So they decided that it would be a better idea if we move into Canada where it, things are more permanent and we know if we get the education from here, it'll make our future brighter. Maples Med School is a school where you learn through your passion, your interests, and what you really want to do when you grow up. For me, when I walked in, in med school, I want to be a traffic controller. And this year I'm leaving as wanted to become a physiotherapist. Climate change would affect my future in many different ways. I think especially personally, just knowing that I have family back home and I know they will be in danger because they are in a developing country and developing countries don't have all the resources they need. I wonder if there are any climate refugees in Winnipeg. I contacted the Ada Learning Center where people work with refugees to help them settle into Canada. I wanted to see if there were any people there who became refugees because of climate change. Hi Tim. Hi. How are you doing? Good. So far. That's good. That's good. Um, so where are you from? Oh, I'm from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. from Asia. Um, how long have you been in Canada? Um, I've been here for more than three years. We've been like, since August 2016. Mm -hmm. Like the main reason is for like better opportunities. Mm -hmm. But one of our problems is my father is a farmer mm -hmm. and the climate is not stable. So mm -hmm. our income is not that stable. Like we don't have fixed rains and the temperature. Sometimes we don't. We need some enough sunlight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's too much. It's El Nino. Mm -hmm. So there's a year we have too much really heat. Bad. Some years we have too much rain. Mm -hmm. So also affects our income because mm -hmm. our like, grains cannot sustain strong winds. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's because of climate change? Yeah. Yeah, it's because of climate change. At some part of the Philippines, they recorded like too much hidden before, mm -hmm. and it causes heat stroke. Mm -hmm. There's a year like two years ago. Mm -hmm. There's heat stroke outbreak, and mm -hmm. my Lolo is one of them, but he recovered. Okay, that's good. understanding of science of climate change, I interviewed a professor at the University of Winnipeg. Uh, well, I'm Danny Blair. I'm a professor of geography here at the University of Winnipeg. 
I'm a co-director of the Prairie Climate Center. I have a personal question. Um, I'm personally an immigrant, not a refugee, but I have been displaced and my family has been displaced many times. Hmm. So I do know how it feels when you get displaced from your country. As being an immigrant, displacement is, it's really hard for me. I seen my parents leave when they were really young. 18, 19, oh, wow. learning new language. Um, I have interviewed um, a, a Filipino uh, youngster who came from Philippines because uh, what he faced was his his grandfather owned a farm and his dad was a farmer and he used to work and they that's the way that they had their encounters. And because of typhoons and like Philippines is a really hot place mm -hmm. and that really in their income source reduced over time each year each year it's been three years they've been in Canada mm -hmm. um, and he has faced a lot of emotional circumstances in his family especially his grandfather died they had to take a loan to go to Philippines to just see them right, right. so what's your input on the climate with refugees that leave the country because of natural environmental impacts. Well, the story you just told about leaving home, the consequences of that from an emotional point of view, let alone an economic point of view, a psychological point of view, it's, it's really important. Home is, home is important to us. Mm -hmm. um, we're roots from a family perspective are really important. It's hard to give that up. So uh, it's, it's, it's sad to, to, to think about that. It's sad to think that that's going to happen more often. Mm -hmm. uh, climate refugees are already a thing, and they are absolutely going to become more of a thing in the future. Climate refugees are a reality that the world has to deal with from a political point of view, from a cultural point of view, from an economic point of view. We have to open our arms and welcome people and be more accepting of their varied languages and histories and, and needs and desires. Um, How's your, what was your family transition from Philippines to here, like as an entire family? Like what were some of the struggles you went through like when you moved from Philippines to here? If you're okay answering that question. Like problems? Yeah, problems um, that you face. Mostly financial. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's, that's the main reason. I mean, the main problem. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have any funds for that, mm -hmm. and so we sell all credit card, credit cards mm -hmm. at first, and we're still paying for it until now. Mm -hmm. It's hard because last year I think, or last two years, I've been depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for more than a year I think, or mm -hmm. less than a year. So that's hard. It's a really hard transition. Yeah. Especially like language barriers. Did you learn English back home? Yeah, because like they taught us mm -hmm. English as like secondary language mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. So it's not that hard. Not that hard. Yeah. It's just a transition of like of like it's just like for conversation I think mm -hmm. because I'm not good in conversation. Mm -hmm. Speak so, yeah. yeah, for me it was a really hard transition. What do you think, as someone who has faced climate change, as one of the reasons why you left Philippines, what do you think people should know about climate change and about things that happen to refugees like or immigrants like us? I think they should be more curious about the cause and effect of the things that they're doing mm -hmm. and how to sustain. Mm -hmm. Like the living without damaging our nature. Mm. Talking about developing countries now, something that I think, do you think developing countries face more climate change or like more face more climate difference than countries who have already been developed or mm -hmm. do you think it's equal either way? It doesn't matter where you live. 
Well, it's not equal. Some parts of the world are going to see more warming than others. For example, Canada's Arctic mm -hmm. is on the front lines. Canada's Arctic has warmed a very large amount already and is going to get much, much warmer. Mm -hmm. But the tropics, the, the lower latitudes, mm -hmm. are also experiencing significant changes. Why does Philippines have the most typhoon or like mm -hmm. what is it climately? Is, did that happen before even climate started or oh, sure. is it recently? Yeah, like, the Philippines is a really interesting country. It lives in a very hot part of the world mm -hmm. and is surrounded by very warm oceans. And that warmth in the oceans is the driver, it's the energy that creates these, these typhoons as they're called in this, that part of the world. Hurricanes, same thing in, in this part of the world. So typhoons are a normal part of the Philippines climate. But in the future, typhoons are expected to get worse, more intense in time. If there's more energy in the oceans because they're warmer, there will be times, and we're starting to see that over the last 10 years or so, the Philippines has been hit by some remarkably uh, powerful typhoons that have affected and killed a very large number of people. Uh, so typhoons will, are expected to get worse in in the decades ahead as the, as that part of the world as all parts of the world get warmer mm -hmm. so uh, that's going to be a problem and so too with sea level rise of course it'll, it'll be about a half a meter or something like that at, at a minimum i'm sure that exacerbates it even more so when those storms come on shore in the oceans just a little bit higher the a very large amount of the coastline becomes uh, inundated with with salt water agriculture and of course there are hundreds of millions of people who, who live along these coastlines and so are they going to be, stay, be able to stay there they can survive perhaps one storm mm -hmm. but can they survive a series of storms is, is very likely mm -hmm. probably not it's, it's hard to it's hard to bounce back from these storms under normal circumstances let alone under exacerbated circumstances such as are expected to occur in the future so how many, like, I know typhoons is also a big thing in Philippines. My I and my friend were talking, she's also Filipino, her name is Shui. Uh, we were talking about it and um, she said that there's a lot of typhoons that happen in the Philippines. Have you ever been a part of any typhoons or have seen any typhoons? We usually have eight, eight to nine, I think. Per year? Yeah. Oh. Affects our income because mm -hmm. our like, grains cannot sustain strong winds. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your what's your input? Do you think we could lower our carbon dioxide emission? Can we change the way we live as a world? Or do you think things are not going to change and are going to stay the same? I think we still have chance. Still have chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we educate more people and like our change our the way our products were made. Mm -hmm. I think we still have a chance. Mm -hmm. Last question. Do you think our world has hope? Mm -hmm. But do you as who has seen climate change as going out hand seen the impact that has been created by now do you think it's going to it's going to change over time do you have hope in climate change i do there are days there are bad days for sure you know, as i said i've been doing this for over 30 years i've been studying and teaching climate change for over 30 years and it's been a frustrating three decades or so because I see that we understand climate change and the causes of climate change. Um, every year we understand more and, and better, better understand what's happening and why it's happening, what the potential negative consequences are of it. So the, the science of it is solid. The response to the science is more problematic. I've been very frustrated over the years and currently still with the the slowness of our, our, of our response, individuals, co uh, communities, uh, and, and up to global, it's been a very slow response. Do I see things getting better? Yeah, I do. 
Um, and so I, I, I'm sure we're going to be in a, we're going to do better things in the coming years and decades. I just hope it's fast enough to prevent those kinds of changes that are going to affect large numbers of people around the world and destroy ecosystems. And you know, the, the beauty of nature is just amazing and a lot of it is, is, is changing and never going to come back. Um, so we need to, as I, as I say, turn that curve down. There are some really good signs that the curve is going to change because solar is becoming so cheap now, solar energy. We need to use that as much as possible, as rapidly as possible. Uh, wind and other kinds of green energy uh, are, are becoming more used and, and affordable. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a lot, lot that has to happen. And, and this seems rather trite, but again, talking to you and, and seeing the youth movement is a, a very, very good sign. You know, I've, you know, for years people have asked me, you know, this same kind of question. So, how do you feel about our future? And I said, I've, I've, I've always been honest. I've always said that I'm worried. I'm really worried about our future, the, the, the future of your family and my family and their kids and their kids and their kids. And they're, they're, I'm worried about what the the future holds. Mm -hmm. But when I come to work, you know, I have this great job at the University of Winnipeg. I talk to young people. And I see the increasingly every year more and more passion uh, and interest from young people about making change um, in their own lives and, and nationally and globally. And so you know, the, I see that the hope is in, in your eyes. I, that's I'm sure there's hope. Do you do you have hope? I mean, before when I started this project, it seemed like less but over time that I've interviewed people I've gained more knowledge I have learned I've done my own research if we individuals and countries and politicals and business industries who create fossil fuels we all work together and we fix things around and it's not just just every single person in the community giving up something it's the big industries who create more fossil fuels also use less fossil fuel and get nothing just about themselves and think about their children mm -hmm. i think that yes we do have it and yes we will get things fixed and rate them better and have a brighter future for all of us i'm glad to hear that mm -hmm. good let's make it happen thank you with a small push and a little encouragement we can get each other moving in the right direction when people start coming together, that's where I look to find hope.